I'm just, I'm just gonna start throwing the n-word out there and watch John like curl into a little ball. And like, oh, no. Not again! Not again! Congratulations, you hacked yourself. <laughs> oh no, no! Why does this always happen to me? No! <laughs> oh. Welcome everybody to the Three Geeks Podcast or Six Geeks Podcast. <laughs> Max and I have somehow tricked John into being a regular, so uh, thanks for joining us again, John. We appreciate thanks. it. Uh, Mike, man, this is the first time you and I have been on one of these in a while together. How are you doing? I know. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm coping. Uh, I've been enjoying your one and done podcast. Oh, yeah? Nice. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, John, what current TV are you watching right now? Actually, um, I finished last night Happ and Leonard. What's that? Okay. You know what? <laughs> Everybody says that. So it, it, it's not a very long TV show. It was, I remember seeing advertisements for it a couple of years ago and never watched it, but it's on Netflix. It's, um, it, it's, a, it's three seasons, six episodes each season. That's um, British. No, it's not. It was on Sundance Channel. Oh. And it stars James Purvoy um, and Michael K. Mm. Williams from The Wire. And, and then there's other, like, like Christina Hendricks was in season one. You know, like Cor- Corbin Burnson was in season three. Andrew Dice Clay was in season three, too. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Dice fan. Yeah. Uh, they ran them. Yeah, it's really – I liked season one and season three. Season – Two could have been five episodes. They really stretched to get a sixth one. Uh, but it's just about these two guys, James Purfoy and Michael K. Williams. It's Hype and Leonard. They're, it takes place in the 80s. They're in this East Texas town. And they just get into weird, like, mysteries. Uh, but it's really well done. I liked it. I, I liked especially season one and, and, uh, and season three. And like I said, two wasn't bad. It's just, like, they stretched to get a sixth episode in there. And I'm like, eh, you could have just ended with five and it would have been much better. But I highly recommend it. If, if you kind of like that quirky kind of Southern justified feel to like a, you know, Scooby-Doo mysteries, basically what, what every season is. Even the mysteries are bigger in Texas. <laughs> yes. So. What's the latest from Knight Rider, John? On Scooby-Doo mystery? <laughs> I haven't watched any Knight Rider, unfortunately, this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> Plenty of Matlock, an episode of Murder, She Wrote, but no Knight Rider. Sorry. When's, when's Matt Talk getting a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for that. Jason, you already let the cat out of the bag? <laughs> I told Max. <laughs> Max did the uh, we're still we're still ironing out a few details, Max. But I'm I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. A monthly podcast talking about the greatness of Matlock. Yes, yes, it'll, it'll be an internet sensation, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, that would be the kick in the balls, wouldn't it? Like all the hard work I put into the PVD cast, and, and this goddamn thing is the thing that goes like. <laughs> and corporations are writing fucking checks and sending them to Jason and I, and I was like. Oh, great. This is the one. This is the one that takes off. We'll get white suits as a sponsor. Just just throw everything at the wall, see what sticks. That's right. (laughs) I can't imagine there's another Matlock podcast, so we we might get people. (laughs) I'm going to look that up while you guys talk. I'll see you guys. (laughs) You guys see John now touring the nursing homes? (laughs) No, you can't tour the nursing homes. That'll kill Uh, the old yeah, I meant post COVID. Obviously, there's no such thing. That's never. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm still waiting for the murder hornets to come next. Yes, My murder hornets are here, man. They're here. My favorite yeah. thing about COVID right now is John's Facebook Live videos. Is anybody else checking out his videos? Like he's always like uh, some, some kind uh, of adventure. He uh, debuted the, the the gloriousness of his facial hair. Um, I'm I'm a little sad to see it gone, but uh, oh no, you still well, rocking. Yeah, he's still, still, he's still got. It's still, it's still all good. Everyone is fully bearded in in this podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to be different, Mike. I was like, I have to be different. I'm bringing back the Harley race. Such a contrarian, John. Jeez, oh, Scott nice. changed his beard. <laughs> I have to get a closer look at it. 
I trimmed up this. I trimmed it up. Yeah, it was getting out of control. <laughs> nice. Max is growing facial hair. I mean, it's, it's growing in. It's growing in half-assed, like always. It's That's, like what, what, thirty start. years of growth, right there. It, I mean, <laughs> it's only twenty-eight, but it's it's not bad. It almost looks like I've got sideburns going, so so that's that's fun. Nice. No, my this sucks. <laughs> Did anybody catch the uh, Goonies reunion with Josh Gad? No. Nope. Oh, I was legit crying as I was watching it because he's got them. He's got them running lines, and they're all there. Like Spielberg is there, uh, Zemeckis is there, or not Zemeckis. Um, uh, Joel Silver and um, Chris Columbus. The whole cast, Josh Brolin. What, Max? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was fun to watch them run lines. I watched the Parks and Rec special. How was that? Uh, for what they had to work with, it was okay. I mean, it kind of, it, it not like not being on the set kind of to me took it away. It, like took you out of the feel of Connie. And it because it was just them doing what we're doing, and it was like, oh, we got to call Tom, we got to call, uh, you know, Andy, and it was kind of, mm. it, it had its moments, but it wasn't what I and, and what I mean, the thing is with these like Zoom or whatever reunion specials, like, are they actually scripted or is it just the cast like improving off of each other? I felt I, like the Parks and Rec was scripted. I felt yeah, like. it was okay. very heavily scripted. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm the kind of guy who, like, when I see something like that, I like keep thinking of like the production that went into it because they're like, "Oh, look, it's Chris." I'm like, "Oh, Anne's in the other room because she's a nurse, so she can't be in the same room with me." And it's like, "Okay, yeah, just no one's actually together." Like, yeah. I don't know, things like that just stick out to me. It's I don't know. I find it interesting because uh, the one thing I saw well, last month, I guess, the Reno 911 Zoom calls. Because they're trying to bring back a new season on on QB or I can't I can't remember. It's on Quibi, yeah. It's on Quibi, QB. I don't know what that thing's called. I just know it's the one thing that has that golden arm video that made me laugh hysterically. But um, like yeah, they had the Reno nine one one cast, and I'm like, wait a minute, half of these people got killed off in the fifth season. How are they still alive? But they're just like joking around, whatever. Zombie nine one one. There you go, zombie nine one one. Uh, I was never a huge Rito 911 fan. I've For me, it was, it. it was one of those shows where if it was on, I'd watch it. But otherwise, you know, I didn't really make time to watch it. You know what I mean? After 10 years of trying over and over and over again, I finally got into The Office. <laughs> the original or the NBC version? NBC version. I, I've been laughing my ass off. I used to think the show wasn't funny at all. And then just suddenly, I don't know if it's because I work in an office now. But suddenly, like the jokes have clicked. Oh man! Uh, but like I, the Office is, is is like really funny. But I don't like the um, the like oh he's an awkward person. Let's laugh at him humor. Like like it makes me feel like a bad person. You <laughs> know, like, after watching four or five minutes of The Office. And- Wait, who are we are we talking about? Mo- uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve Carell. Yeah, or- yeah. Like when you know Steve Carell or even um freaking. Dwight, uh, like this guy just gets crapped on his whole life, and he can't help it that he's like this person. <laughs> oh, but that's that's kind of the joke. I feel it's like because uh, Michael Michael Scott. That sorry, that's his name. I can't believe yeah. I've been watching that show like nonstop, and I forgot the fucking lead character's name. Oops, sorry, that's- we swear. My bad. Yeah, you can swear. Okay, cool. But anyways, like yeah, that's the fun part is that like he is so oblivious that he's awkward, and so is Dwight. Like Dwight doesn't care. He doesn't give a crap. Like, yeah. Like- with Dwight, it's a little less because he just doesn't care. I, he, I think he understands that he's different on some level, but well, like he's superior, or he thinks right, he's superior. Yeah, that's that's true too. Yeah, he's got a superiority complex. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, with uh, with Michael Scott, with that character, he like really means well, and he's really trying hard. It's just that he doesn't know anything. You know, like he's got mm-hmm. no social grace. So it's like yeah, I, I always felt bad laughing there's, at him. But there's <laughs> awesome moments in the show where like he where he switches off a little bit because i feel like the whole point of his character is that because it's a documentary and he's in front of a camera he feels a need to have to show off and perform but when he's not when he's just like being himself like he's actually like really appealing and really people like really like him then but then when he's like 
I remember there's one specific episode. I don't know. We just turned this into an office. Because I can talk about because I can talk about the office all day, Jason. I'll spoil shit for you. But um, like he doesn't realize he's being set up on a date, but when he does, like he overcompensates and it backfires horribly. It's oh, I like, love I love Michael Scott and Toby, the HR guys, interactions <laughs> with each other. Ever since you know he tried to bring sexual harassment into the office to like mm-hmm. stop it, they've like hated each other since because you know Toby's taking all the fun out of the office. It's it's great. Like he sabotages this guy. To springboard off what you said, Max, I feel that way about um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. There are points of that show where I'm like, that's just downright mean, and I would fucking punch you in the face if you did that to me. Like, they're just like, I mean, it's I, I get it. It's supposed to be over the top and really ridiculous, but I find that show to be more, more so than The Office to be the one that's like, that's just downright cruel. You should not do that to somebody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 the guys, I like it's always sunny, but like, it's, it's you know, a bunch of assholes and bad stuff kind of happens to them. And they all, you know, like, they try their, their quote unquote best, but they're so narcissistic that they can't get over themselves. Um, I like it's always sunny just because, yeah, like it's Danny DeVito on that show, I think is ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 I've actually stopped watching the last like two or three seasons, so I'm trying to rewatch those. But uh, I definitely understand why people don't like It's Always Sunny. Just because, yeah, it's just a bunch of assholes walking around doing mean things. Most, I mean, like, like, it's mostly to each other, so that's why I don't like <laughs> I know you watched season one, Max, but did you anybody watch season two of Jack Ryan yet? Yeah. It's really good. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm only on episode four, but I'm really digging it. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know about really good, but it is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I like John Krasinski a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just feel like the first season had a little more nuance to it. This one, he's always like, oh, man, got to go into the jungle and fight terrorists. And, and yeah, that's not really the Jack Ryan character, though. You know, like, that's the other thing I don't like. You know, it's like, they kind of just make him action guy. Yeah, which he really and, wasn't yeah, in the first right. one. Like, when shit went down, he could pull a gun and hold his own. But they're like, why is this analyst with, like, the special ops team? Like, yeah. and that was kind of the the attitude they had in the first season like no like you're not really like a spec ops guy we'll let the soldiers go in and take care mm-hmm. of things right. now they're like jack ryan we got a problem like oh I'm, i'll come with you and they're like all right now like i'll fine with it well they kind of let me call the rest of the seal team and we'll get right there <laughs> it makes sense to me why he's the action guy in this one because it's personal for him he's made it personal mm. but this time did any personal. Did anyone see the, the, what was it, the Chris Pine, the Shadow Recruit, kind of like the origin story? About? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've honestly only seen Hunt for Odd October, Red October. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say, they, they sometimes, you know, he, he that's very much what Scott was saying. Like, he starts off very mild-mannered in the beginning of that movie, but then, like, in the last 20 minutes, he's uber superhero jack ryan which is like that was a big leap in just hours okay <laughs> like in the books too i mean ryan was the the analyst guy who turns into the the president not you know yeah that that actually happens like later on but uh not not like the rainbow six guy which they're trying to make make him into now but whatever <laughs> It's like they forgot that they were making Jack Ryan and they accidentally made Jack Reacher. <laughs> <laughs> Might actually be a better Jack Reacher, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he at least fits the, the description, unlike Tom Cruise. Like, I mean, at least John Krasinski's like six foot two. <laughs> like, you, don't like, you don't like Jack Reacher and his perpetual standing on Apple carts? Apple carts? <laughs> How about uh, Westworld? Is anybody watching Westworld? Yep. I think season three is miles better than two was. I was a chore to get through season two. I bought I season one like two years ago. I was, I was enjoying it up until last week because I'm just like, why is Maeve still doing what she's doing? Like, she, <laughs> like her for the all-knowing, like, all-powerful host, she's kind of switched off that part of her brain. Yeah, I'm caught up to – Last week's. I need to watch last week's. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, I, I'm enjoying it so far, and I agree with you. Like, we that storyline needs to start going somewhere, please. But every other part of the show, I'm really digging. I like um, oh, what's his name? Um, Aaron Paul. 
yeah. he's finally in something post Breaking Bad that I think he can be proud of. <laughs> oh, you didn't like um, Need? <laughs> What's that? You, you weren't a fan of Need for Speed? I've never seen it. There oh, you okay. uh, Bojack Horseman. Yeah, Bo. I was about to say Bojack. He's really good. There. Yeah, Bojack not- in general is just really good. That's, that's, that's voice. Yeah, that's not the same. It's not reacting. Betrayal <laughs> <laughs> from an Animaniac? Wow. I'm going to put that at the beginning. Damn, you need to cut that out and put that at the beginning of uh, every Animaniacs episode. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That should be the bumper. It's animated. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I yeah. can do Coming that. Next, Max interviews Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, how does it feel to not actually be acting when you're using your voice? <laughs> Mark, when you're just talking at these you, you, for these cartoons and, and getting paid, is this, is this more like this quarantine situation? Like you know, you just sit around, you don't do anything all day. And <laughs> hey, it goes back to what we started with. That's what he threw at the wall and stuck, Max. Okay, <laughs> you know, in that large gap of unemployment, he's like, I'll do something. You hey, know. <laughs> I wish I could get paid for just talking and not doing any acting or work. <laughs> Max, you got some topics for today? Uh, yeah. Okay. So since it is now socially acceptable to walk outside, like fully mashed up, which superhero or character would you like to cosplay as? Because now you don't seem like such a nerd when you do it. <laughs> I've been okay, uh, cosplaying as a member of Cobra. I just would tell you right now, Max, yesterday I happened to just be walking through my living room and I stopped because there were people, you know, it was nice outside. So there was lots of people that walked yesterday. There was a woman dressed as Harry Potter (laughs) walking her dog. I'm like, where the hell are you? Like, I have never seen you before in my life. I've lived in this neighborhood going on 13 years. Where the hell have you been? It's your next door neighbor. (laughs) It probably is. I have no idea. It's, it's that damn good of a Harry Potter outfit. I'm like, Julie? You know? There we go. Scott's on top of it. <laughs> John, the basement dwellers are more comfortable going out now. Like, even as somebody who's okay with being home as I am, I'm getting a little restless. I want to go out. So, you know, the basement dwellers are coming out. I guess. I guess. I mean, I, I like to think every time I have to go make a grocery run and I have my blue face mask and my hoodie on, I'm sub-zero, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Who would you cosplay, Dan? Reptile. <laughs> Combat team. Because because you take the mask off, you can spit on people. See, it's great. <laughs> they're, they're sure to die. <laughs> that is a very fitting. Oh mask. man! Spewing COVID at everybody. This is great. <laughs> Dan gets COVID and goes out dressed as a reptile. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what Reptile really was. He wasn't like a demon lizard. Yeah. He was just an asymptomatic carrier. <laughs> oh, yeah. The retcon is real. <laughs> Mike, would you like to like time travel back to like the early 90s and go to an arcade and go, listen, you're not going to believe this, kids, but Reptile is real. <laughs> Reptile's real. And he's going to be every one of you in your 40s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're going to be Reptile like 20 years from now <laughs> i'd like to uh cosplay as like quarantine bane you know because i'm all fat like bane just let himself go <laughs> uh, i picked i picked because it was easy i mean i i appreciate that you guys in the group chat enjoyed my lady rawhide reference but um <laughs> so you're not wearing that one I'm not wearing that one Aww. because much like you, I've put on weight, so I don't have the abs. You know, I don't have the abs I used to. Don, Don, you are Lady sorry. Rawhide. <laughs> yes, Lady Rawhide was like, uh, remember Topps Comics, Dan? When yes. Topps got yes. into it and they had like four or five titles. So Lady Rawhide was like this so. super sexy redhead uh, Wild West character. I think she, was a, she appeared in a couple Zorro comics and then they spun her off on her own. Lady... Um, I want to say Will Truman wrote it. <laughs> it was really good. I liked it. It was a fun, like, <laughs> Catwoman-like book. You know what Machi, I mean? Like, Machi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can pull that off, John. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mike's hater. Googling it. What the, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mike is a hater. <laughs> I can't believe in your uh, 
I believe in you, John. I think you can. Mike's not a regular guess, like you, John. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can all dream. We can all dream. Sure. Uh, I, I honestly would have picked uh, Cobra Commander. Like okay. the silver masked blue helmet Cobra Commander, not the space-aged one or the one with the hood. I would pick old school, regular Cobra Commander. You, you don't want the one from the movie? No. Uh. I don't know what you're even talking about. There have never been any G.I. Joe movies. Except the animated one. Except for Resolute. Yes, Resolute. That was a very good one. Yes. Oh my God, and the Resolute only one. So good. I need to see Resolute. I just started watching G.I. Joe, the animated series, on one of the streaming services that's free. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it definitely uh, was a for toys. I think that Resolute is on, like, uh, I think it's on Tubi. Okay. So you might be able to check that out. So we got did we Resolute for Animaniacs? Yes, we did. Oh, we did. I was going to say. Was that the yeah, one with the trebuchet? <laughs> Maybe. What? Was no, that the I don't one with think the trebuchet. trebuchet okay. Or was that one of the Batman ones? Okay, yeah, that was never the, mind. with the Gatling... Yeah, the there you go. Yeah. yeah, that was a bad that's man. That's not Joe yeah. Resolute. Because that was yeah. the uh, um, League of Shadows. That's the only thing that, that, that I remember, but it was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they make this work, but I like it. <laughs> you know what? To share, Dan, Gatling guns aren't cool, first of all. So yeah. there yeah. you have that. <laughs> I mean, you got the end of the wild bunch. Come on. Yeah, I mean, my buddy and I, when we were in college, we were like, if we came into money – if we came into a, a, just a shit ton of money, we would go to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and have our own minor league hockey team. We'd call them the Gatlinburg Guns. And so every time they would score a goal, like they would have the Gatling gun that would have like red lights that would, you know. She's copying the Blue Jackets cannon. Well, this was years before the Blue Jackets. I mean, technically, the Blue Jackets is copying the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cannon. Let's not let's not get into he said she said. Let him do his thing. John, how's it being on a radio network? Oh, man, it's good. It's good. Um, you know, and uh, you know, new episode will be tomorrow night, 930 uh, on Redline Radio. Um, man, things, things are going well. Uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm being dead serious. The amount of feedback and uh, views on the live broadcasts have been fantastic. And I cannot thank Dave enough for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to be on Redline Radio. Um, and they got, they got a ton of great shows. I mean, the Canned Air podcast is on. Uh, they air on the uh, on the network in the mornings, Monday through Friday. Uh, they have a, a, a pretty cool wrestling themed uh, podcast, the Hot Tag Wrestle Corner, and then they got a lot of sports as well. And, and there's, I think there, if, if I'm not mistaken, there's one that's kind of like a general, like it's called What's Your Opinion, and you just they throw out a topic, people talk about it. So it's it's great, man. I mean, I've I've really uh, appreciated it and. You know, it's actually made me kind of uh, want to step up the game even more. Make sure that I can get episodes out to those guys uh, as as and and not miss any weeks, if you will. So not have any gaps. Max, what are you doing? <laughs> Max, you're muted. <laughs> Just messing around. <laughs> Dan, I like your background. Uh, it's my front room and my books. The DVDs for the books. Um, the DVDs are upstairs. The, the books are downstairs. Nice. Yeah, the, Dan is now designated the downstairs as the podcast area. So, so he's not spending all this time in the upstairs. Okay. Pro tip. The router is like 10 feet over there, and that's as long as of, of a cord that I have. So there you go. <laughs> did anyone watch Extraction? I did. I've, I've, I've been slowly waiting for you to bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case... Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave! <laughs> nice. From scraps! <laughs> Tell us about Extraction. <laughs> uh, it's extraction, a.k.a. Thor versus the Children, is <laughs> awesome. It is so much fun. Uh... <laughs> It's not a great movie. It's like a Bollywood collaboration movie, um, but it is it, it's a blast. I really had fun. The action sequences are, are are really snappy, and there's a lot of like 
ooh moments, you know? Like, the, I feel like in any good action movie, you need to see three things or see some dude just get laid out in a way that you haven't seen before. And they provide that like two or three times. Was this straight to Netflix or was it one of those ones that were supposed to go to theaters and then go to Netflix? No, it's straight or? to Netflix. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think they... Cause yeah, they, I'm pretty sure like the Indian or <laughs> the Indian people came like they wanted to make a Netflix movie, and then they're like, okay, well, what can we do? They got Chris, Chris Hemsworth in there, and then like they just kind of made this movie because most of it takes place in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and they just lay waste to the Bangladesh. Bangladesh, it is ridiculous. Like if, if this were a real life movie, it would be like we'd be seeing this on the news is like terrorist action in Bangladesh. Like <laughs> crazy white people going nuts and murdering all the police officers and army people in this poor Indian country. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. There's, there's, there's children that get thrown off of roofs. There's um, like a, a gang of children gets beat up by Chris Hemsworth. It is so <laughs> worth watching. <laughs> It's great. It's amazing. I love it. It's it's definitely my favorite movie of 2020. So, are these children like doing evil things? Do they deserve to get beat up? What? No, not always. Some of them, but yes. not all. They were in this film. I would like to uh, congratulate Max on his growth cuz uh, 2 years ago Max would have been like, yeah, all the children deserve to be thrown off the building, but now he's saying that not all of them. No, 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 no. Jason, don't don't get it twisted, okay? All the children <laughs> don't deserve to get thrown off the buildings. I would just like it if they got thrown off the buildings. <laughs> this, comment's probably, this comment's probably for Dan and Dan only. Do they set tables up before they throw them off the roof? I mean, I just, Hell, you know. No, but that, that would have been a lot more fun. Yeah. Co-starring the Dudleys. Steve, on, get the tables. I'm, I'm, sen I'm sensing, Dan, you might have differing opinions on this movie. <laughs> yeah, okay. So yesterday on, on the chat, Max is like, oh, yeah, we got to talk about this. I'm like, okay. I will watch this. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking boring. <laughs> okay, now the action sequences are okay. But the problem is that all of the actors look like they're bored and they have all of these like long staring into the distance parts where you can just put like, man, I could really go for some kind of burrito now in, into what they're thinking. And it works every time. Like, it's just... If you could go for a burrito. Yeah. Yeah, I could too. Now, now if, if you were in a film and, and, and it's like this dramatic thing and, and what, what, what really pissed me off at the end was the slow motion platoon ending. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> uh, I didn't like the cop out ending either. Um, I thought that was kind of lame. And like the, it, does, it does drag a little bit. I was the think. cop out ending that an autistic child picks up a snow globe and shakes it? Is that no, 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 no one I likes that scene elsewhere so. reference? They, okay, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I got you. Okay, if you guys don't want me to, if you guys want me to spoil it, I'll spoil it right now. But uh, uh is it the ending to cop out basically? Oh, I mean, it is I never a cop, saw out. cop out. You said I, cop yeah. out ending, so that's what I was wondering. Is it yeah. just <laughs> cop out? no, no, <laughs> they, uh, yeah. The, all right, I'll tell you. Uh, spoilers, 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 spoilers for anyone listening to this. Um, at the end, you like they have this big battle scene on a bridge, right? And Chris Hemsworth is like shot in the neck, shot three times in the back, and just like all kinds of effed up from the whole movie. Falls over a bridge, right? But then you never see him come back up. And at the end of the movie, you see a guy standing in the back that could be him, but you know, like you don't like they don't officially say it, but they say it. Yeah, it's just like a cop out. It's like, like, oh, he's not dead. Like, come on. <laughs> does he go to, does he go to a, a cafe in Florence and look at Michael Caine across the yeah, way? Yeah, Michael Caine's sitting there and he's like, hey. hey. Actually, oh. he's he's just watching kids in a swimming pool. Yeah, it's just much it's more creepy. That okay. Have you guys nice. seen the scene of Kim Jong Un sitting with uh, Anne Hathaway with Michael Keaton across the? <laughs> The table staring at him. <laughs> Michael Keaton? Well, I'm sorry, Michael Caine. No, Michael Caine. no I have not. Michael Caine. <laughs> Michael Crichton. Um, no, there's uh, there's like one scene in the movie where, where Chris Hemsworth is like, uh, hey guys, I can act too, just, just so you know. 
throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, I can I can stare into the distance for, for 30 seconds too. Yeah. And look sad. Uh, it's it, it's uh, uh, yeah. It, like the movie is not great, but I I had so much fun with it. And like <laughs> then I'm gonna say like the first 30 minutes, the first kid dies, and then I'm I'm all in. Jeez. So, yeah. Now 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 throwing the kid off off the roof was 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 okay. <laughs> was the kid? Come on, you loved it. Was one of the kids he beat up named Noob Master sixty <laughs> nine? <laughs> Did he fulfill his promise? Oh my goodness! But yeah, I mean, my my whole problem with this is that everybody in it just looks horribly unenthused. Like like the love interest chick, like she's like, oh, oh she's, don't, but don't that, don't go over there, Tyler. Oh, screw it, do whatever you want. I don't care. I'll just see oh, this head. Well, that's like, where I'm like. This is definitely like a high end Bollywood production versus mm-hmm. like a low end American production. You know, like that's that's what I felt. But Bollywood pr- pr- you know productions are like frenetic with weird dancing and, and stuff. This is just we look forward. So there was nobody doing a TikTok video in the middle. No, of the no, no. no. Okay. It's, it's not. It, it's not that Bollywood in the sense of like it's Bollywood. It's Bollywood in the sense of like eighty seven percent of the people in the movie are Indian. Was I it, expected it, like a blockbuster song, like during no, the whole end shootout. No. That would Thank be great. God that did not happen. <laughs> was, uh, was, who's the director? Is it someone well known, or is it was it actually like? Okay. <laughs> Netflix. Netflix is the director. Netflix. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I will. I will say that Chris Hemsworth is pretty pretty damn good in the Jay and Silent Bob reboots. I it's need not- to see that still. Oh my god! I can't believe I forgot that movie happened. It's what, actually it's really good. He plays a hologram. He plays a hologram. It's hilarious. <laughs> yes, yes. He and he's only in the movie for like five minutes, but yeah, it, the hologram much. parts of him is hilarious. <laughs> and it's really good. Much to, the the to like geek out about his dick. <laughs> What'd you say, Mike? Kevin Smith's daughter and her friends get to geek out about his dick. Yeah, <laughs> please don't hump the hologram. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sam Hargrove is the director of Extraction. He was also the director of Atomic Blonde. Oh, okay. I like that movie. I like the Atomic Blonde. I did too. And The King of Fighters. He's a stunt oh. guy. Isn't that a video game? Yes. He's a stunt guy turned director, which oh, okay. makes sense. With yeah. They're getting more jobs, those Stunt guys turn directors. Max, wasn't there another topic you had? No, I just had the two. Oh. No. Uh, you brought up a good point, though, about, like, you know, movie being released to Netflix, because isn't that kind of the big hullabaloo with AMC and Regal and Universal right now? Oh, yeah, we could talk about that. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting, because, like, apparently AMC and Regal have sworn off of showing Universal <laughs> movies. That's bad business for AMC, especially since they're not doing well. They're, they're file, didn't they file for bankruptcy or Chapter 11 or something? Yeah. Well, they can't do anything right now. Like, they're legally shut down, like, by the government. Well, no, no. The, the whole thing is they're saying because they re- because Universal released Trolls World Tour or whatever on demand and that they're planning on releasing it in theaters once, you know, they're able to, as well as keeping it on demand, that... AMC's claiming that puts their, you know, is that a breach of contract? Is it basically what they're trying Universal, to say? the uh, <laughs> Universal? So yeah, obviously Trolls Two came out, and um, Universal came out and said, "Wow, Trolls did just as good as we would have expected it to do at the box office." So well, yeah, better because they get all the returns now instead of having to share it with the theaters. So it's so, like, um, <laughs> we're thinking in the future that we may start putting more stuff directly on you know voodoo or wherever you get you know the straight to movies and Mm -hmm. they didn't say they were gonna do all of them but amc took it the wrong way and said we're not going to show universal studios anymore movies and i think that's bad business because whether you like the movies or not universal has jurassic park they have the fast Fast. series franchise that's a big money maker especially in concessions and stuff that they're going to lose out on and also like i don't know uh, i know down in texas they're gonna try to reopen some theaters with like tsa style security upgrades which is like it's not worth it for an amc movie going experience <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> or anything or evo or something like that well here's here's my gripe reopen i am fucking dying 
<laughs> well, my gripe is this. Like, look, I make no bones about it. I'm a cheap ass. So I go to Marcus Theater seven dollar Thursdays or whatever. So yeah. I pay to pay twenty bucks to watch a movie on streaming for me doesn't make to me I feel doesn't make financial sense. I get it if I had a wife or I had a bunch of kids. Twenty bucks is no big deal. But I'm like, yeah, no, I don't want to pay twenty bucks to watch this movie when I usually pay seven bucks or sometimes five bucks or whatever you know whatever the gateway has their deals in Marcus and all that. Like, you know. I pay twenty bucks a month to go to at least three movies in a week. Like, yeah. I'm not paying twenty dollars to sit down and watch a movie at home. That's mm-hmm. not gonna happen. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like the the there sure there's gonna be overlap between the two audiences. You know, so, like people like me who have tons of kids, it's twenty bucks is amazing. But right. I still want to go see Black Widow in the big screen. I still yes. want to go see these big movies on the big screen. So they're not going to lose my money because I'll just go by myself and I can watch it with the kids at home, you know? But I don't know. It just, to me, it seems like a bad, bad plan. And I think that the COVID-19 has helped the studios in the sense that I feel like more movies are going to come direct to streaming. I'm surprised Disney hasn't tried it with Black Widow because they could afford it. But depending on how open, you know, like the, the only reason that, that Tiger King and, and Trolls is doing well is because everyone's stuck at home. Like, this is the only thing to watch at home. And and I, I once that is not the case, I feel like some of their numbers won't reflect these Trolls numbers. Yeah, because like they're the kids are going outside. It's like okay, we're gonna go out and do something. We don't want to be stuck at the house. So like that's the other thing too. I mean, Universal said like, hey, this made a lot of money. This might be something we you know think about doing into the future. But like they're not really taking into account the fact that yeah, like when there's other options to do something, they're probably not gonna stay home and watch trolls. Like that's that's yeah. I I think the movie is like. Um like a shape of water or a parasite. I think those are the kind of movies that should go day and date on streaming services. Cause those are the movies that people are either going to go to the theater and see, or they're not. Uh, you yeah. know what? Parasite doesn't need to be on a streaming service. Just, <laughs> just, you know, it's on Hulu. Hot just take. forget about it. Hot, hot take. Orlando. Academy, Academy award winner. That's hot parasite. garbage. That's hot garbage. Hot garbage. You didn't like parasite? No, I did <laughs> not. That's I one thing that John like. and Trump have in common. <laughs> Mike, did you like it? Oh yeah, yeah, I loved it. It was like my oh. second favorite movie of last oh. year. Oh. Yeah, all right. I'll be the <laughs> I'll be the odd man out on that one. I did not. Like it's okay. It. I, 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 I didn't see it, so that's fine. We live in a society, guys. We live in a society. Kind of. Dan, did you have something you <laughs> want to say? Yes, I, like... yes, I did. <laughs> to go back to Max's thing. Now, when 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 all that's the stuff reopens and everything. Yeah. Hey. When all this stuff reopens and everything, are we not being conditioned just to watch, you know, shit at home now? Like, uh, not me again. Like, no. I, I know I'm weird. I'm, I'm the outlier, but uh, because no, nah, man. Like, I I cannot wait to get out of here. Like, I I need these theaters to reopen so I can go watch movies. Like, I get that. I, I really just prefer to watch movies at the theater. Like, it's... see, I, I don't. You got the sticky feet and the. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah. Give but, me, don't bother me. But, but, but I mean, you got companies that, that, that are like, well, I mean, why, why do we rent out an office space if we can just have people stay at home now? So, I mean, you, you can do that with, with you know, media too. Why don't, why don't these bigger whatever. chains try to acquire like some of those shuttered drive-ins? Those, are, those can be functional in given the current situation, honestly. Yeah. That yeah, would be Ohio, great. In Ohio, they had to be closed for all of this, but I guess everywhere else, the drive-ins have been thriving. Yeah. I was trying to open one like five years ago, but now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, because I'm, I'm kind of with Dan on the here, – here's the thing. I'm, I'm half and half. Like, I like the theater-going experience. I don't yeah. like the AMC and yeah. sometimes don't like the Regal-going experience. I'm like – because those have just turned into clusterfucks of bad behavior during movies and not proper hygiene and so, so forth. Yeah. And, you know, if people want – if people are so starved for movies that they're going to want to reopen with like this body cavity searching equipment, like, <laughs> like this is ridiculous. Like they're like, they're going to be like screening people with infrareds allegedly to be like making sure temperatures are under a hundred. They're going to be saying like, have you displayed any symptoms 14 days prior to coming to the movie theater? Not factoring in that, you know, some people 
don't display symptoms at all and can still carry the thing. Um, and that you're going to want to enforce this at the most widely distributed, like franchise chains of theaters where quality assurance has never been an issue for them to seriously consider. Like every time I would go to an AMC in the past, like five years, I'd be like, this place is a shithole. <laughs> and these people that I'm watching this <laughs> are annoying as hell. God, I hate going to the movie theaters. Now, like, boutique cinemas like Alamo Draft House or something like that, sign me up for that type of stuff because that's oh, yeah. an actual, like, great theater-going experience where you can get, like, food and, you know, proper service. And they're, they're sticklers about, you know, turning your cell phones off during the, th during the show and, you know, telling people to have proper theater-going etiquette. Like, sign me up for that. I don't mind if those stick around. I could give a crap about AMC and Regal going by the wayside because I even own an AMC Stubbs card and I don't even use, I haven't used it in two years. So <laughs> to be fair, uh, James no, I, and Columbus, um, at least eat Linux and Easton are fairly nice. They yes. Have the, they have the new, um, what's it called? Um, the special, like they have special screens that you can go into. They're a little bit smaller. They got like the top of the line surround sound and um, like screen quality. Hmm. When did that happen at Lennox? Because I'll be honest, the last time I was at Lennox, which was maybe about two years ago, it was a dump. Eastern no, Lennox, Lennox is a college theater. Like that, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. You tell yeah it was a dump. That theater, they're marketing towards college kids. That is, the seats suck. The, I, like the Lennox, but I, like, they, the, the only thing that's good about the Lennox is they play a lot of different stuff than a lot of the AMCs. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and they have, I think, like just more shows. For, for the people to, you know, so you can go. But uh, no, Lennox is not the, uh, the top quality AMC. Yeah, I, I would definitely, if you want, if you want high end, you, you ought to get to Dublin or, or to Houston. But I mean, I, I, I just like that, like anywhere I go in Columbus, there's an AMC, like not far, like not far away. Uh, I went down to Florida and I was able to use my AMC movie pass. So like, that's what I like about AMC. Um, I haven't been into an AMC that's been like straight crappy like like Mike has been talking about in a while. But I mean, those theaters have to exist. It's, it's just oh, they do. It's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I give I give love to Marcus. I love Marcus theaters up here. I Marcus think. Crosswoods. Yeah, I mean, it's always been a great theater. I I dig it. Twenty. I mean, which yeah, it, to go to a movie with me and the kids? In which case, I would say that 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 would be where you should pour all this like. If you're if you're so desperate to want to reopen a you know a theater like pour it into those ones that encourage like cheaper rates so that you can get more volume of customers who would want to you know spend that amount of money because like I said it's like I'm not wanting to spend like thirteen fifteen bucks on a ticket and then like concessions that are mm -hmm. way overpriced and things like that mm -hmm. even if you know even if I was a member rewards thing but it's like at the same time want to be able to get some good quality as, aside from that i don't know if you saw this but um one of it's from a reputable source but um i guess some of the television networks since they have nothing to premiere in the fall are negotiating with the streaming services to pull some of their shows and put them on network television <laughs> like, in a <laughs> weird <laughs> reversal yeah. well i just saw where they're doing uh cbs is doing the sunday night movie of the week hmm. like it's raiders of the lost ark this sun tonight yeah it's tonight nice. oh, sweet Jeez. Yeah, all right, I'm down. But yeah. I have to bring or, back the 70s ones. That... Yeah. Or you could just watch it on Netflix like I did two days ago. But, yeah. yeah. You know. But it's on TV. The first time a few weeks ago. Yeah. Now, are, are You've they never seen the... Raiders of the Lost Ark? Oh, my God. Never? Yeah, now. Whoa. I've oh, seen my parts, God, dude. Parts of Raiders, but I've never seen it all the way through. That is impressive. You've seen the other ones, though, right? You've seen all the other ones? I've seen Temple of Doom a million times and okay. Last Crusade a million times, and that's it. It's all, it's all the Indiana Jones movies. Yeah. <laughs> Those three are epic. I mean, yeah. you could never possibly make another one, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's the perfect. I mean, you could. You could make another two, but, but they haven't. <laughs> right. Right. You could. If they did, it wouldn't be the best quality. No. Mm. They'd probably no. use CG monkeys. If yeah. I sent my, my box set with a blank disc, I, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> it's a DVD cleaner, isn't it? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just make sure you rub it on the ground outside on the pavement for a few minutes before you uh, put it into 
put it in the DVD player there. Uh, <laughs> I had a, I have a friend who who said, "Well, that one's not. It's not that bad." No. Right now that you've said that, I question every opinion you've ever shared. With me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. I liked I liked what's her name as the villain, and Kate that was Blanchett? that was about it. I was just like, that's a she's she's going for it. She as the villain in what? As the villain in I don't know. I, I it was a fever dream I had that there was a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> it was Kate really Blanchett's old. good. Yeah, she's it's a great bored. actress. But some but he keeps saying he likes playing the character because he likes money. So. He might do a fifth one. I don't know. I woke up after that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you swore off drinking before going to bed. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, God, I need to drink more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Check out Mike at YouTube.com forward slash Mike McGee TV. Hey. Check out John at PVD MVP on Twitter and PVD cast wherever you find podcasts. Give a quick like to this video on Facebook and rate and review the podcast. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Recycle your droids.